I went to uh, my then publisher, uh, Michael. I said, you know, I want to do this book, Michael. He said, that's a great idea for a book. I can't pay for it. It's too big. It needs to be a huge book. It needs to be like the definitive history, if you can pull it off. You need to go to a great big publisher. So I went to the biggest publisher I could find, which was Random House, and suggested I'd like to do this, and they jumped on it. So what I wanted to do was not just a history. I wanted to use a lot of the skills that I had picked up working for magazines. And there's a very particular skill set you get doing that, that you don't get working for, say, newspapers or even writing academic histories. When you write for magazines, you write... Uh, Tom Wolfe called it new journalism. Uh, I actually prefer the term narrative nonfiction. What it does is it tells stories about real people and real events, but it uses the techniques of novelists to do it. So what are those techniques? Well, they, they, they're quite simple. There's nothing magical about doing this. There's scene setting. So for instance, you know, if I was writing this up today, I would describe you know, the scenery, the blue carpets, the chairs, the people in the audience, the, widescreen TV, which obviously, you know, post-states the fatter, older TVs over there. Very, very basic technique. There's character describing individuals. You know, history is a collection of stories, one after the other, about people. And uh, Australian history has just as many interesting characters in it as anybody else's history, particularly <laughs> if you go back to the colonial era. Um, there's point of view and what Wolf called status life, which is actually getting inside the heads of your characters. And this was quite controversial when uh, journalists and, and non-fiction writers began to do it back in the, for the first time back in the 1960s and 70s because what you are doing is writing a story that you say is true, but you are telling people what is inside the head of the person you're doing it about. Uh, an example of this was there was a profile of Joe Frazier, the boxer, um, which had Frazier sitting in an aircraft which was going down a, taxiing down a runway, it was going to take off into a storm. And the entire story was written from Frazier's point of view, it was inside his head, the journalist wasn't there at all. This thing came out massively controversial. Like, how on earth could you know this? You're not Joe Frazier. You know, what magic have you used to crack open his skull and peer inside and, and tell us what's going on in there? And the journalist went, I asked him. It was that simple, you just ask people. So that was something that I wanted to do in this story. And the story actually, sorry, this book, Leviathan actually opens up inside the head of a Vietnamese man called Dinh Tran, who was an officer in the South Vietnamese army who was put into a concentration camp after the war. Uh, he eventually escaped with his family after about four or five attempts, made it down to Sydney, opened up a really nice restaurant out at Cabra Manor called uh, So Far So Good, Far spelled P-H-O for the soup. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it was cool too. Um, but the